Thank you. Thank you for having me. Seeds, Jocelyn, Kathy, everyone. Goodrin, thank you so much. That was lovely. And Dr. Milks, very interesting. And my eyes have been itching the whole time I've been sitting there. I think I'm the only one who's having an allergy attack while I'm sitting sitting here tonight. So, um, is it, is it, is it, can open the door? Oh, I know. I, I'm allergic to the tree pollen. Okay. <laughs> Um, green cleaning, eliminating toxic agents and chemicals, creating an environmentally conscious lifestyle within the mind, body, home, and on our earth. <laughs> you can go right ahead. Sarah. So green cleaning basics. Gudrun talked so much about all of these things. Um, the, main, the main thing I use every day is water. I, that's what I start with. And it is becoming a very precious commodity here on our earth. Um, white vinegar is another main key factor in uh, my daily cleaning. Baking soda, I do use essential oils. Um, I'm going to talk about a few that come from things we use in our home every day and things we eat, like fruits, oranges, lemons. Um, Lavender is a big one that I use. Uh, that's my main one. So things that we aren't so sensitive to on a daily basis. Castile soap, um, I, for a very long time I used a cleaning concentrate called Citrusol. I'm starting to get away from that now because I'm using my own um, cleaning concoction that I'll show you how to make tonight and I will be giving that away to someone. Um, an enzyme solution that you can buy, I don't really use it very often, but um, the company that makes my my cleaning cloths does sell it. I use aspirin to clean my face with or scrub my face with. Uh, I do use coffee in a, in a scrub for my face. And coconut oil is a huge, um, really great thing to, to moisturize your body with. So, and I talked about water, the first essential life-giving and cleaning agent. Why white vinegar? Um, Vinegar is acid and it helps to break down dirt and bacteria. It's very simple. It's extremely economical. You can buy vinegar for what, $1.89 per gallon mm -hmm. at the grocery store? And you can use it for all kinds of things. And it is safe for your pets. It, it dissipates very quickly. You don't want to leave anything on your floors that are, are going to hurt your pets, no matter, no matter what you're using. Um, but water and vinegar are probably the safest things. <coughs> When I clean my floors, um, or anybody's floors, I'm very careful what I use. Water's the main thing. I do use a steamer on hard floors. So if I'm putting something down on the floor, I'm picking as much of it off as possible. Um, and typically it's going to be water and vinegar. Um, you can use one cup of vinegar and a few drops of essential oil to Brighten up your laundry. You talked about that too, good friend. Go ahead, Taylor. Baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, um, is a fairly fine powdery crystal, um, kind of water soluble, and it's a wonderful scouring agent. Slightly, um, it is slightly alkaline, and most cooking residues are acids. It interacts with these acids and bubbles up and just scrubs away all that food and yucky stuff or whatever's in your sink or your tub. So I use baking soda on a regular basis. I use it this way. Um, it's much easier to use it this way for me because I clean people's houses every day. So I did bring a bunch of these along with me. If you would like to Can we see that purchase list? them. This is called a daisy top. You just put them on your mason jar you just use a little baking soda. Well, uh, uh, this will hold a whole jar or a, a whole box of baking soda. And what I do, if you would like, is mix about 20 drops of essential oil into your baking soda. You can sprinkle that on your carpets what and let it sit. Oil? What is essential oil? I'm going to get to that. What, what, what kind? Also? What kind? Also. Well, I I use lavender. Oh, okay or eucalyptus, or you can use a citrus, like orange, if you're sensitive to the other ones. 
You can use orange or lemon. That's, that's the safe, those are the safest ones to use. Or lemongrass. Lemongrass is much, it sounds like lemon, but it's much stronger than lemon or orange. And you, and you can come up and smell them after we're done here. Um, but this works fantastic on lime scale or scrubbing your tubs, sinks, but you can use it as a carpet fertilizer as well. Um, okay. Essential oil. It's a natural oil typically obtained by distillation. There's, there's other ways of doing it. Um, and it has the characteristic of the plant or other source from which it is extracted. It is natural, but it's also volatile because it is the that essential essence from mm -hmm. that plant or flower. So it's so, con okay, I'm, I'm holding the baking soda. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so concentrated. Imagine how much it takes from that flower to come into this bottle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many rose petals it takes to make essential oil, but it's a lot. And a, a little tiny bottle of rose essential oil costs, oh, it's over $50. <gasps> so it's, a, it's quite a process to distill that essential oil out of a flower or fruit. Some of them are harder than others, more difficult than others to do. Goodrin talked about this. Um, essential oils have inherent antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral properties. Not all of them have all of these properties. I mean, there's a whole long list of them. But they are natural and, and a useful way to kill germs and bacteria, funguses, viruses, molds, and mildew. They do have aromatherapeutic benefits. So they impact you on a mental and physical level. Peppermint increases alertness and is very uplifting. Lemon works in the same way. So you can choose different essential oils depending on what mood you're in or what mood you'd like to be in. Moving on to Castile soap, which I mentioned before. Where is it here? I, I typically use Bronner's Castile soap when I'm cleaning. There's different types. You do want to be careful with the Castile soaps out there. Um, the original Castile soap was made with olive oil. Some of them today are get they, they should be vegetable based, but you want to you want to choose a, a pure olive oil or a, a pure Castile soap that is made with a vegetable oil and not an animal fat. Um, for instance, palm, coconut, and jojoba. They're not all so pure. It is eco-friendly. You can read this. Oils are mixed with al alkali, sodium hydroxide for solid soap, and potassium hydroxide for liquid. Detergents and contemporary cleansers have only been around since the advent of modern manufacturing processes and the surge of petrochemical use. Castile soap is gentle on you and the environment because it's free of artificial foaming agents. Those artificial foaming agents are the surfactants or the, the sodium lauryl sulfate that's in almost all the soaps that we use or the detergents that we use in our hair or the liquid um, body soaps that we use. The Castile soap doesn't have that in it. It is biodegradable. You can skip over the citrus. The one thing that I do use every day um, for cleaning is called a gleam cloth. Not that this is really an advertisement, but I don't use paper towels when I clean. So I try to keep it as env environmentally friendly as possible. Um, this is this is a glean cloth, and it is a recycled cloth that I use over and over again. And Kathy has seen mine, and they look really ratty. <laughs> um, oh, there it is. Okay. 
So you just wet it, wring it out really well, and you use it on every single thing in your house, from windows to mirrors to every single thing. I, I can't even express to you any more than that, that you can use it on every single thing. So <coughs> I do have... Wood and wash it? You can use it on wood. Yeah, I use it to dust with, so I wring it out. You keep washing it, washing it, washing it. And my <laughs> some of mine are starting to fall apart now after about two years or more. But I use it damp on wood. I don't use a um, pledge or anything like that. I made I did make cleaning cloths for countertops and things like that before I came. Okay, so this is um, a multi-purpose cleaning cloth that I made with my clean cloths. And I used a, just a, a white tub for easy access. And I, what I did is I made the multi-purpose cleanser that I'm going to show you how to make. And I put my clean cloths, I cut them actually into, into halves. And then you just take it out and you can wipe down your whole kitchen with one of these. Or your bathroom. But I'd use a separate one for your toilet. <laughs> but you can you can pass that around and smell those if you want to. And there is lemongrass in those. Those cleaning cloths. have water, vinegar, castile soap, and essential oils in them. And I'm going to show you how to make the cleaning spray in just a few minutes, and I'm going to be giving that away tonight. Do you have the recipe for um, I don't have the recipe for that. I do have the instructions for Oh, I do. Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> Yes, I do have the recipe for the, the all-purpose cleaner. Yep. Okay, Taylor, go ahead, sweetie. Okay, so we talked about aspirin before. Um, I do use aspirin on my face, and um, I actually spoke with a physical therapist um, a year or so ago, and he told me that he was talking to a cosmetologist who told him that aspirin is a wonderful anti-aging factor. And he said, you just crush an aspirin up in your hand and use it as a little mask on your face and rinse it off. So I'm thinking and thinking about this and I said, why not just grind it up in my coffee grinder and add a little lavender to it? Because lavender is very healing to the skin. You can actually put lavender essential oil on your skin. It's the only essential oil you can put on your skin and it will help heal a burn. You cannot put any other essential oil directly on your skin. It is very irritant and toxic to your skin. So I grind up aspirin into my coffee grinder, put some lavender in it, and put it in a spice jar. And then I use it in my shower. And aspirin is anti-inflammatory, so I, I gather that's why he said it's anti-aging to the skin. And if you look this up, there is a lot of a lot said about aspirin being anti-aging online. So <coughs> I like it. It's it's a fun thing to do in the shower. So <laughs> try it. You might like it. I do. I have tried this with coffee. If you don't grind the coffee up really, really fine, it's a little too rough on your face. But for ladies, you can try it on the backs of your legs. Coconut oil. Um, you can use coconut oil for just about everything. Um, people put them, in, put it in their smoothies. You name it. Um, try taking coconut oil, whipping it up with a, a little essential oil of your choice. I would pick something like lavender or lemon, something that's not real irritant, and you can use it as a body moisturizer. Some people like to use it on their face. 
I do use fractionated co coconut oil on my face with some lavender and tea tree. Fractionated is, um, I don't know how, I don't know what the process is, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but it's liquid coconut oil. So I put in a little spray bottle and I use that on my face. So your green cleaning kit just consists of something that looks kind of like this. It's just about as simple as, as it could be. And that's what mine typically looks like. So <coughs> I do have a recipe or uh, instructions for these. Taylor made these for me today. This is the um, better version of what I made last year. These are made out of polar fleece and they're a little heavy. These are made out of the microfiber cloths and they're very economical, but not only that, they're very environmentally friendly because if you like Swiffers, they're very expensive and you throw them away after you use them. These you can just keep washing and washing and washing. And Taylor, how long did it take you to make these? Got it down to like 13 minutes. <laughs> well, okay. Let me just tell you something about it. <laughs> she works very fast. <laughs> so it's probably going to take you a good half hour to make one of these. But isn't it worth it? Even if you had two of these set aside in your house to add to your cleaning kit, they work fabulous. I have another girl who works with me, and you can see, I, like, they work. She loves them. She doesn't ask me to buy her Swiffers from the store. She, right, Kathy? She says, oh, I love these things. She loves them. And they work great. And they already picked up some dust. What are they made? So, what are those, what are microfiber cloths. Oh. Where do you get the handle thing? This is a Swiffer handle. Oh. Oh, okay. So if you go to the store and you, you buy the Swiffer kit, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll have like three of those fluffy Swiffers, and you can use those and throw them away, and then you'll have, who has Swiffers in their house? Okay. Yes, Dr. Fox, you have them too. Yeah, they're, they're a fantastic product, but why not make, make your own? Either with polar fleece, these work great too, and, and or this, and I'm telling you, you just, I have bleached these every single day for a year, and they still look like this. <laughs> so. What did you, right. you, you mean you used bleach? Yes. <gasps> Kathy, do you know why I use bleach? Because I clean so many people's houses. So I, me personally, my, my clean cloths and my Swiffers, I do bleach every night because I go to so many people's, I, I want to make sure that they are. But in your house, you can use peroxide. And I would suggest that over bleach. Without a doubt, do that. Um, I do want to show you how to make a couple things. We have, we have a few minutes, right? Um, I'd like to give this all-purpose cleaner away to someone who would like it. Um, how should we give it away? Maybe for a donation to Seeds and, and the center here, they'll get something. OK. Right, Jocelyn? Should we Kathy, do, that's a great idea. We do, <laughs> so we're going to work it like an auction? Hey. All right, so the all-purpose cleaning spray. I already put the water in. I usually use boiled water because that's just easier than distilled water for me. So I just use my tea kettle. Um, this is a 16-ounce bottle. And I put approximately, listen, I have an Italian mother-in-law who doesn't measure anything. And I, I learned well from her. So approximately 14 ounces of boiled water in here. Why make it too complicated, right? And then vinegar, white vinegar. You want to add about an ounce and a half. You don't want to fill it too full because I learned my lesson on this. But you said boiled water. Yeah. But you can cool it. I mean, you're not going to put boiled in no. a plastic. No, I'll let it cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I made that mistake with my, okay. my blink. Well, I made myself very, okay. I almost burned my hands before. <laughs> I <can hear. laughs> just to get rid of the germs, just so it'll keep. Like, if you're not going to use this right away, like, I use this, I go through a bottle of this a day. But if this is going to sit in your... If, if this is going to sit and sit and sit, 
You don't want anything to go bad or turn. You're right. You're right. But this is sitting. So what, what did you put in that much? About a, an ounce and a half of vinegar. And then I'm just going to add some essential oil to this. And I call mine sunny day because I want it to smell citrusy. And orange essential oil. Don't laugh at me, Taylor. <laughs> orange essential oil has a, if you put orange essential oil on something sticky, it will help get that sticker off. Did you ever get Goo Gone? Did you ever buy that product called Goo Gone? It has orange essential oil in it. Mm. And that's what helps take off that sticker. Mm. Mm. It's amazing. So I'm going to add about, I know how many drops are in this dropper. It's about 35. So I'm going to add about 40 drops of orange essential oil. And then I have pink grapefruit, which smells incredible. Who doesn't like pink grapefruits? <laughs> I used <laughs> I used one of these droppers for it before. And I can't remember which one it was. And I'm going to use 50 drops of that. And then lemon. lemongrass. And the lemongrass is very strong. And I'm going to only use 10 drops. If it ever comes out of here. I'm going to shake this up before I add the Castile salt. Because the funny thing about Castile soap and vinegar, which I learned the hard way, is if you add Castile soap to vinegar, it separates the oils from the Castile soap. And it, mm. all, it's interesting. <laughs> so don't do that. I couldn't even get it off my hands. Did you ever do that, Richard? I just did it before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to present it, right? And it looked horrible. Well, no, yeah. I, no, I can't take that. I, I got it on my hands and I'm standing under the sink and I'm going, honey, I can't get this off my hands. What do I do? Don't add Castile soap straight to vinegar. It's very funny. So once you shake it up, then you have, and then it's shaken, it's, it's diffused enough that you can. Yeah, it. yes. And as long as the vinegar is in the water enough, you should be okay. Let's find out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and you only want to add about a tablespoon of Castile soap to this because otherwise you won't you don't really want to have a solution that you have to rinse. You want to use a wet cloth, preferably a glean cloth, I think. And um should have brought one. It looks great. Where's that tub? Where'd that end up? So, I want to give this away to somebody, so I don't really want to spray it. But it should smell just like this does. And it'll feel just like this, and you don't have to rinse this. To fit. There's so much water. But I'm going to show you how dirty this thing is. Whole thing oh, water chip. So oh. It's funny because I wiped that off with a, with a wet napkin well, before. And this is and what it was black. Yeah. Well, this is what amazed me when I made these glean, these cloths. I wiped my entire kitchen down, and my cloth was so black. I said, "Oh my gosh, honey, our kitchen is so dirty." But it worked great. It really worked great. So. That one's up for auction. Um, 
I do have the lavender baking soda um, scrub and carpet deodorizer for someone who would like that. I have an aspirin scrub for someone who would like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I did want to show everyone one more thing. If you, oh, Dr. Milks, you're going to not like this at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, but on, on the topic of air fresheners, and I had to laugh about the, the poo-pourri thing. Who, did you bring that up? Yes. I thought that was hilarious. <coughs> I love air fresheners. I love essential oils. Um, I do have allergies. I'm probably allergic or sensitive to a lot of this stuff, but I love scents. Bless you. And. Right at you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right at you. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you how to make a, a room spray with just water and lavender essential oil. It's the easiest thing. And if you're going to go in the bathroom and stink it up, just spray a little of it before you go. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they have so much propaganda about spraying it in the toilet or, or spray it after you go. But lavender is such a healing essential oil and it's, it's, it's really, oh, I'm sure some people are sensitive to it, but if you are, don't use it. Use something like orange or lemon. Well, we all, most people like orange or lemon. <coughs> um, this is the easiest thing you can make. I need some water. Oh, perhaps. Uh, okay. Okay. So when you're making this, don't fill your bottle up all the way. I learned this lesson the hard way, too. About three quarters. And my favorite lavender essential oil, um, I, I found this on Amazon, actually. It's called Radha Lavender Oil. It's Bulgarian lavender. And if you're going to use essential oils either on your skin or in the air where you're going to smell them, I, I really recommend therapeutic grade essential oils. That means they're organic. They're, they don't have, they weren't grown with pesticides. And if you're going to use lavender on your body or to smell, you want to use the lavender angustifolia. The, la the spike lavender is really used for muscle aches. That's a very different kind of lavender. So this smells almost like, almost like uh, a baby. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it to you. So this is a four ounce bottle. Are you laughing? I'm laughing at your daughter. She laughs at me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a baby. It smells like a baby. So for four ounces of water, you really want to have about 45 drops of essential oil. So I'm going to use this whole dropper in here, only because I know how much is in the dropper. And then I'm going to finish adding on. And then what's nice about these air fresheners is if it doesn't, if it's not smelly enough for you, you can add more essential oil to it. And then you really have to shake it up really, really hard. I'm concussing it. And is anybody opposed to me spraying this? Dr. Milks, are you opposed to me spraying this? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're opposed. <laughs> um, and if it's not, whoever decides that they would like that, 
And if it's not strong enough for you, then we will tweak it to your liking. Do we have time to make one more thing? Um, how is everybody doing? We do have refreshments, and we do want to leave here at 9, but this is very quick. Go ahead. I'm going to give this away, too. I'm going to show you how to make a sugar scrub. Um, you know, uh, sugar scrubs you can buy in uh, Bath and Body Works. This is the simplest thing you could ever make, and there's no reason to pay for it. So, you just <coughs> white sugar. My favorite oil to use is grapeseed oil. And I'm going to start, this is enough sugar to fit into this little jar. And the reason I make these is because they're very moisturizing and you can use them just for your hands or you can use them in the shower. I can't read this. This is when glasses would come in very handy. So I'm going to start with about half a cup of grapeseed oil. And this is just grapeseed oil that I bought in the grocery store. What scent do you, would you like? Anybody? Lavender. <laughs> Lavender? Is musk a scent? Mm. Musk is a scent. No, but I mean, no, I mean, uh, uh, that's not one that I use. No. Well, how much white sugar did you put in there? Just enough to plug the jar you're using. I used the, right, mm -hmm. I used this jar to measure it. Mm. Well, that, that looks like a cup. Looks like mm -hmm. I used about half a cup of grapeseed oil, which was perfect. So we're going to use the lavender. Which is very nice for your skin. And what was that mixed with? It's only white sugar and grapeseed oil. Hmm. And you can buy it at the grocery store. Excellent. How much lavender? I'm sorry. About 45 drops. I don't know. I don't know. It might, you might want to put more in it. I'm going to put it in this jar and pass it around. That, that's for moisturizing. Mm -hmm. it, it's exfoliating and moisturizing. You leave it on? So if, uh, no. You just rinse it off with warm water. No, no, so no, on, your, on your skin. What's that? Mm -hmm. You scrub it in. And then rinse it off. And it, the oil stays in your skin. Okay. For, but not like a residue. It's like it, it soaks okay. in the like. Okay. <laughs> it feels great. She's so, a grapefruit one night. Huh? Eat it. I eat the grapefruit one. So. <laughs> I don't really recommend that. It's good. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, my friend who works with me, her, her, her daughter came over at Christmas time and I made them with flavor oils and she gave them to her friends and her friends ate theirs. Yeah, it's such oil for Christmas. Oil. Yeah. yeah, they were super excited about theirs. So I might have used just a little too much oil, but you can pass that around. Don't spill it on yourself or you're going to be mad at me. Okay, um, I did want to show you one more thing that we made before we came, Taylor and I. You're going to want to rub them. You're going to want to rinse that off, Dr. Mox. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Yes, because it's sugary. Or, or you can lick it. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor and I made um, facial cleansing before we came. Um, these are made with boiled water, aloe, and just mm -hmm. the Bulgarian lavender essential oil. And they're just washcloths, just like that. And the aloe is a 1x, it's, a, it's an actual liquid. So I bought it, you can actually buy that from Amazon. But there are some different websites you can find that on. And, and I just I just found it by searching. 
and you want to make sure you get the liquid because I made the mistake of searching and getting the gel at first and I couldn't do anything with that. I wanted to make a hand sanitizer with that and it didn't really come out very well. So it's a lot of just trial and error when you're doing this, but it's a lot of fun and you can totally transform your house from a chemical home to an all natural green home. And you can recycle your things and you will not have chemicals or toxic agents in your house anymore. You have those two equipment over there, the two pieces. This is I, I when I use when I vacuum, I use a vacuum that doesn't that's bagless. And it's a canister mm -hmm. that I can wash, totally wash out. Mm -hmm. And the filters below, I take them out and I wash them with my clean cloths at night. And then on the floors, on the hard floors, wrong angle. <laughs> on the hard floors, I use a steamer. And you can see with my steamer, I use it twice a day usually. So it, I have it taped together, but it still works, so I still use it. <laughs> but I use this on all the floors, and my microfiber cloths made a mess of my steamer pad. But, um, this is a fabulous tool, and these are not very expensive, so you can use them on any floor. And I have a recipe in the brochures for hardwood floors with vinegar and water, and a little essential oil that works great. It's in the, uh, you can put the vinegar and the oil in the, in the uh, No, no, no. Okay. Only water. water. You just want to spray it on the floor. And the, and the oil does it make the work more slippery? No. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'll be here, so you can come over and ask me as many questions as you want. Thank you, Janet. Thank you.